the rather horrid attack on the Rokesby Venus to earlier today with Hummers and where the glass was smashed on that is not actually the first time this painting has been attacked. Over a hundred years ago, it was also attacked. Let me share the screens with you. Here you'll see Mary Rally Richardson's attack on it. She attacked it in as part of the suffragette movement and chopped it up with a chopper and did actually considerably more damage. The um, students, or whoever they are today, um, personally, I would think they are, quite frankly, idiots. And that's coming from someone who has some sympathy with climate change movements. But I don't consider this the way to conduct that. Um, hitting with hammers is not exactly the way to win points for your cause. We're attempting to echo her sort of attempt to get attention when she did it. Here we go. Richardson's attack on Velasquez painting the toilet of Venus, which is another name for the rugby Venus, is the most famous act of destruction by a British suffragette. An art student and journalist, she joined the movement in 1910 and was arrested nine times for acts of civil disobedience and forcibly fed in a prison. Richardson described her attack on the painting as a premeditated response to the re-arrest of Emmeline Pankhurst. I have to destroy, to destroy the picture of the most beautiful woman in mythological history as a protest against the government for destroying Mrs. Pankhurst, who is the most beautiful character in modern history. I'll be coming back to Mrs. Um, Richardson in a minute because she has some other issues about her life history you may find amusing. In any case, let's go and find some news about the sort of the wonderful painting. Here we go. The activists arrested after the ropes be Venus targeted. Two Just Stop oil protesters have been arrested after a glass protesting the rope be Venus painting at the National Gallery was smashed. If you've seen the video, you can see they quite clearly stand there and hammer away for a good 20 or 30 seconds in a quite calculated and malicious way. Now, these paintings are also part of the, the national heritage. They're not just a painting as such. They are there for everyone to enjoy. So by smashing that, you are smashing up part of the heritage of the country in a particularly malicious and juvenile way. Now, there's an amusing point about the Rokeby Venus, which I'll call up from Wikipedia. Wikipedia is, as ever, not the most trustworthy source for everything, but it's fine for bits and pieces. As I keep talking, I'm going to ask how many people are familiar with Velasquez's life. If you're not, you'll find out why I ask it in a minute. Here's the Rope B. Venus, as painted by Velasquez. Some It's completed somewhere between... 1647 and 1651. It's the only nude painting by Velasquez, and there's a very good reason for this. Nudes were extremely rare in 20, 17th century Spanish art because this, this art was policed heavily and actively by members of the Inquisition. So Velasquez probably painted this when he was wandering around Italy where the, it was rather more relaxed. Although Italy was an equally Catholic country and had its own inquisition, the inquisitions varied in character from country to country and things weren't so heavy-handed there. So we have the wonderful Just Stop Oil protesters whacking away at a painting and in a way they've become a modern inquisition in an hilarious sort of echo of effects. Returning to Mary Rally Richardson, which I'll, who I'll also come call up from the wonderful world of Wikipedia, you'll find out some lovely little sort of facts from her. Here's Mary Rally Richardson, and later in her life, she'll notice she was head of the women's section of the British Union of Fascists. Quite amusing, really. Nor was she the only suffragette to make that to trip. There was quite a few of them that wandered off to the very far right of politics, despite starting off as suffragettes. You I find I find the just stop oil activists to work against their own cause. I'm not going to pretend I don't have sympathy with climate change and don't consider it a real issue. I do. I don't think it's all made up of fluffy nonsense. But the just stop oil activists 
by standing around museums whacking away at paintings from 350 odd years ago, which could be enjoyed by everyone, don't really engender anyone to their cause. What you have is bored, what seems to be bored middle class kids who seem to have nothing better to do with their day than whack at paintings. Or the other groups associated with this lot seems to be retired sort of very minor academic figures who seem to think they're doing something incredibly brave by sitting on the roads, blocking buses and ambulances. I'll admit to being... Normally, if you notice with my videos, I'm fairly too far to the left, but on this one, quite frankly, people do actually need to get to work. Hospitals do need to have ambulances get to them and so forth. And the Just Stop Oil protesters really have managed to annoy and frustrate everyone where they could have gained public support. This is the second time in the last few months we've had one of these silly demonstrations for them. We had tomato soup last time, chucked on to stuff. My question is, why did you go and give that tomato soup to some of the many homeless people sitting in the West End chaps? It would have been far more bloody useful than chucking it over paintings. Today we have two people whacking away a painting with hammers. And in their own way, as I know, becoming their own form of an inquisition and their own form of an absolutist point of view in a debate, attempting to quell all opposition. If Just Stop Oil want to gain some support for their points, they really, really do need to rethink their tactics because this is really not working. And all they are really doing is alienating the vast minority of people.